the first presenter is Giuliani Venturelli. She's going to talk about the Bayesian skill mixture item response model. Good afternoon. My name is Giuliani Venturelli. I'm going to present the work that I developed with my professors Flavio and Rosangela during my master's program. So it's on the item response theory field. So before I explain the goals of my work, I'm going to explain a little bit about item response theory. So it's a, a psychometric theory, and uh, the goal is to measure variables that I cannot observe directly. So for instance, if I want to measure how tall you are, I can just go there with a measure tape, and uh, I, will, I can directly measure that. However, when I am interested in um, variables like intelligence or depression or anxiety level, which mine would be really high right now, I would need something like IRT. So, um, from I, how, it, uh, we, how we do that? We use uh, items from a test to try to uh, establish uh, a relationship between uh, subjects' performance on a test to uh, these non-observable variables. So, for each item, uh, we'd have a curve who, uh, that will describe your ability related to your, um, your performance. So, Usually, uh, 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 item response theory has a bunch of models, and uh, mostly they will, it depends on how the, the items are. Like the, if I, I, the, the type of questions that I work, it's like binary questions. That is, either the person gets the question, the item right or wrong. So, I will tell, I will say that uh, Y is one if uh, the subject endorsed to a, uh, an item and zero otherwise. So one of the main feature, features of uh, IRT is the item characteristic curve. Oops, sorry. It's a symmetric mono, monotonic increasing function which gives me the probability of a subject of a given ability to endorse an item. So we would expect that uh, the higher the ability, the higher the probability of the person to get the item correct. And uh, the low the ability, the less the, the probability of uh, success in an item. So the function that gives me that probability, it's that's for like for a binary item. It's either this one, a legit one, or a probate one. Um, and uh, these are the E, no, A, B, and C are items parameters, and the theta, I don't know if that's the right way to say, but theta is the subject's ability. So this is how a item characteristic curve should look like. So for each item, we would have one curve like this, and the, the parameter B, which is the test's difficulty, tells me how much a person must have of ability to endorse an item with that difficulty level. And uh, so here I have three curves, and they distinguish between their difficulty. So this one is a more difficult, difficult item than this one and then this one. And here I have three curves and they differ from their uh, discrimination power. So here I, very, I have a very, like a perfect item that discriminates between uh, ability levels around this trait, so 
I get, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't explain this, but here on the X, I have the ability and the, the ability levels. And here I have the probability that a person at this ability to get the item right. And here is the, I'm just working with the guessing parameter, which gives me the probability that a person with a very low uh, ability to get the item correct. So okay, so m our work is if you see here, these curves are all symmetric. The way that they work, like they are symmetric from this point here to here. So it's very symmetric and the, our work is to cre create, create a, a item characteristic function that's not symmetric. So we want to use a symmetric curve. There are some, because uh, like sometimes uh, the symmetric link is not the best one, uh, depending how the item is written. And uh, there are some works that proposed that, like uh, Samejima's work. She proposed a logistic po positive exponent family. What she does is to put an exponent on the curve, and this is how she makes her um, item characteristic function uh, asymmetric. Uh, Bazan and uh, others, they also developed a skill normal IRT family. It's an extension of the two parameters uh, per bit model. And what they do, uh, they use the asymmetric normal family developed or proposed by Azalini in 85. And also, Dos Santos, in her dissertation, she did a extinction of uh, Samejima's work. And what she did was to use a mixture for the asymmetric parameters. So my work is something between these two here. OK, this is just the, how the asymmetric normal distribution looks like. And the here, lambda is the asymmetric parameter. I won't go through this. And the, this is how a asymmetric density would look like. The solid line is, a, is the case where the parameter, the skew parameter is zero. And this is a very extreme case of uh, skewedness. And this is how the parameter, sorry, how the skill parameter would affect the item characteristic curve. But instead of using that parameterization, we use based on uh, the work of uh, Valli and Azalini, we use a parameterization of the normal distribution. So instead of use, using the parameter that they use, that Bazan uses, we use the gamma, which is person's skewness co coefficient. We did that based on the work of uh, Professor Caio Azevedo, but what they do in their work is to put the, this distribution on the ability, ability, ability level. So the, this, like Azalini, they, they say that this parameterization would better, would make the shape of the likelihood better. So, so okay, so this is the model. So I have here, so given the um, item parameters, which like A for me is the discrimination power based difficulty, and the gamma is the skill, skillness parameter, my response is a Bernoulli with P, where P is given um, by, this, uh, by the centered skill normal distribution. And here's just how the item, items parameters are related to the ability. So my likelihood would look like something like that. 
and uh, to avoid working with uh, Bernoulli likelihoods, we use the augmented data. So, I, if uh, well, they show that if x is uh, higher than zero, my Bernoulli is one, and uh, zero ad otherwise. So this just makes the computation much easier. And the, the main uh, contribution of our work is also to, it's to use a mixture for, for, um, on the scale parameter. So a curve, like an item characteristic curve, can either be symmetric, negative symmetric, or positive symmetric. So we, cre we cre create here three um, portions, and that this is related to the symmetric model. This is related to the negative model, and here the, to the positive model. So instead of looking to gamma, to my skew parameter as one, I will, I will create two uh, chains related to the negative and positive values of it. And then we use a multinomial distribution here on the prior. So if uh, I have the first component is one, it's telling me that my model is symmetric. If it's the second component is one, then it's pointing to the negative symmetric. And uh, if the third component is one, then it's pointing to positive um, symmetric model. So this here is just like a point mass at zero with a, so with probability one, if I'm here, my model is symmetric. And the, because gamma is always between zero, zero and one, or minus one and zero, we use a, a truncated uh, beta here to, as a, a prior. So the, MCMC process to make it easier. So instead of working with uh, one gamma, we make two chains for gamma when it's positive and the one, one when it's negative and one when uh, gamma is positive. And uh, at the end, I will look to, like my gamma will be related to, I will just look to that chain when the model visit the when Z pointed me that my model was negative or positive. So this, the, the way that this is set, I can uh, sample Z directly from its full condition distribution. So th these are my priors. Um, I assume that they are all independent. And uh, this is how the posterior distribution looks like. I won't go through details, but and this is well, this is the posterior when I open it. This is how the posterior looks like. So I put like my mixture is here on the parameter inside the centered skewed normal distribution. So it's here where I, I we use the mixture for gamma. Of course, the joint density function is huge and complex. Uh, it depends on uh, how many students I have, and that could be like thousands of students, so the, the, the dimension is just like huge. So we use a MCMC, Gibbs sampling with the Metropolis Hastings steps, and uh, this is the, the blocking structure that we use. So uh, A and B, the discrimination power and difficulty of the item, they're related closely related to each other, so we, we sample them together. This is a full conditional distribution of X, and uh, again, it's always, it, it always depends on uh, the value of uh, gamma. Here, it's the full conditional of the ability, which, which has a very 
weird distribution. So like the, the, the dimensions here depends on the number of, of items that we have. And uh, the, the, the dimension of uh, A and B, it's even bigger because it depends on the number of subjects that I have, which could be as big as the number, like, uh, I, I don't know, uh, 50,000 students or, and uh, so we use the metropoli metropolis hasting here. But you could also sample directly from its conditional using Gonsalves and Germanman algorithm. The P is, gives me the probability of uh, Z and it's a, the Dehichele. And this is a full conditional distribution of Z. And this is the full condition of, of uh, gamma, which is the skew parameter. So which, wh what it does is we calculate the, th these functions uh, uh, using the, the values of uh, gamma when it's equals, when it's zero, when it's negative, and when it's positive. So we expect that the curve that has th that better adjusts to the data will give me the higher value for, uh, for these, this part here. So at the end, we have something that looks like this. And uh, what it gives to me is this is the posterior of Z and the uh, estimated values for gamma. So the size of the bubble gives me the probability that the model is either symmetric, negative, or positive. So the higher the probability, the, the higher should be the bubble. And uh, so for each item, I would have three bubbles which shows me how likely is that that item is symmetric or asymmetric. And uh, the point that the bubble is at shows me the, estimation, the esti estimated value of gamma. So here I had like 50 items. How long do I have? Please, yeah? Okay, so that's it. Uh, we, we, we didn't finish, I mean, well, we still have work to do. We are having some uh, problems in the, uh, on the estimation of gamma. And uh, it's, it's such a difficult parameter to estimate. And because uh, it's like everything here, I don't observe anything in this model. The only thing that I have access to is the, like a matrix with uh, ones and zeros, which are the answers like from a test. So we still having some computer problems and uh, I was talking to Caio and uh, he also said that it could be because of the uh, likelihood function. So let's see, um, that's it, thank you. So, uh, uh, quick one. Uh, can you please comment on that, on that uh, 0 0.99527 that you had there? Oh, how I got that? Yeah, yeah. Why, why a 0 0.99527? Okay. That seems like a, a neutral number to sure. use. That's because the way that. Here is the. Okay. Ah, that, okay. So this is the, uh, the the original parameter that they use to account for skillness is lambda. So this is the skill parameter, and here I have a transformation that uh, maybe it's on the other. So here. Uh, 
well, okay, I, I don't have the equation here. It's just first, the first transformation to make um, things easier, they change. Instead of using lambda, they use another parametrization, which is delta, which is a function of gamma. Delta is between minus one to one. And uh, when I use the gamma parametrization, which is gamma is like this, it makes the value, its value between that number that you saw like 0 0.999. So it's just like on the transformation, okay? Um, the, the other one is, is it's, maybe it's homework for you to look at, but it seems to me that the parameterization that you have may be unidentifiable. So, you, sorry, okay, so it may be the case that the parameterization that you're using is probably not identifiable. If you change the positive to negative, you change the zeta 1, i1, and zeta uh, i2, etc., you may get exactly the same uh, value of the gamma. So, you might have an identifiability issue, which uh, of course typically creates problems when you try to, you know, estimate things. So that's something for you yeah, probably yeah. to look at. We are looking at that, uh, to try to see that problem. Thank you. We are working on that to see if uh, that would be the problem. So we'd have to ch uh, change the blocking structure to, no? Maybe not being super sophisticated on, on trying to separate the positive and the negative effect, effect but uh, you know, to use something else like uh, uh, point mass at zero representing symmetry and another distribution which may be symmetric as well, but, but something that you know separates the effect that you're trying to. Uh, uh, I mean, it englobes the effect that you're trying to separate. That's so you're saying not to separate. Uh, yeah, that's, that's probably one possible way to go. But anyway, it's something for you to think about. No, but it's, we're taking all types of uh, suggestions, so we can think about that. And because, uh, yes, it's just being a pain right now. <laughs> Any other question? No. So let's thank Julian again. Thank you.